Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us at the Reaper Wargaming Podcast. Today we're taking a little step aside from our usual bring a list, talk about it for the start of temp that we're in right now, and we are going to talk about the first two-day tournament or GT that happened at the club this weekend, and I have two of the committee that played in that um, tournament as well to just chat us through how it went, what happened, who won, some interesting lists that were there, and just the general vibe. So first off, tell us, tell me how it was. Um, I'll go to you, Keir. Um, how was it? What was your favorite part of it? Uh, I think it was a really good weekend. Uh, I played five good games. I don't think I had a game where I wasn't like, well, I, that was a good Warhammer. Um, I think that everyone had a really good attitude uh, going into the weekend. Uh, best part of it, my tiny personal selfish highlight would be I inadvertently was like, ah, I'll roll one attack from my Mutalith Vortex Beast. Um, and I kind of thought nothing of it because this attack always misses and I hit with its big attack on a Tyrant effect. So I was like, okay. And then I wounded and then I failed to save. And then I did 12 damage with one shot. Oh to my <laughs> and then, by the way, this attack has never hit in any of my practice games or until round four of the tournament. The next game, I was playing Dave McLeod and his Space Wolves, and I did 12 damage to attack with the big shot from the Vortex Beast. He must have been, he must have been so really upset. Funny. He must have been so he upset. He was, he, was, he was like, oh, what's the AP on that? I was like, minus four. He's like, oh. <laughs> I don't get saved. I was like, no damage. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Your uh, dead. Bye-bye. Just so, one yeah. tear. One tear just rolls down his face. The best part of my weekend was reenacting the Tau Railgun from ninth, basically. Fair enough. Sons. It sounds like it did some absolute devastating hits. Uh, a devastating wound, if you will. But actually, <laughs> in, in spirit only, not in, in actuality. That's fair. And um, Fulvio, how did you feel it went? How how was it for you? Um, in all honesty, I enjoyed it a lot. I was not like looking forward to it, to be honest, because I'm like, oh, it's tenth edition. I don't really enjoy it. It's not that good, in my opinion. But I had like three games before, so I didn't play much. It was just an occasion to uh, get more games in and and just try to understand the mechanics. And and once you get with some excellent excellent games because i played brian c and Innes, uh which are like two of the players of team scotland i just i just learned so much uh even if well one game was closer than the other but uh, <laughs> spoiler um <laughs> no i really really enjoyed it uh i enjoyed the five good games five good opponents one of them was kier <laughs> sorry kier <laughs> Um, so close too, dude. It was close. It was really, really close. Yeah, it was good games. Um, I, I got a grip with the rules of my army, which uh, is what I wanted as well. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to play a bit more, especially once the balance hour patch is out and levels kind of get a bit more in line. We we hope that's what happens. Um, so. Tell me, what was the general vibe of it? Was it three days on the Saturday, two days on the Sunday? Is that what it looked like? How many players involved? So, you want to go here? Uh, yeah, uh, I think it's a very typical GT setup, mm-hmm. which is Grand Tournament for the Uninitiated, uh, which means three games on a Saturday, two games on a Sunday, exactly like you said. So, typically Saturday is game one, Lunch, game two, game three. And let me tell you, by the end of game three on Saturday, I was buckled, dude. Because I got, <clears throat> I had a good first game against Death Guard. I uh, managed to rack up quite a lot of points on that one. Then played Fulvio round two. And it was came down to turn five. We were, yeah. I think there was one point in it until the end of turn five. Yeah, uh, and Fulvio was like, pull, a, pull ahead uh, after almost tabling me. Um, and then round three was against Chris Chung and his infamous Ultramarines uh, with all of the tricks 
uh, making squads untargetable outside of 12 and moving away when I tried to move next to him and the Overwatch and the Desolation Marines. Brutal. But a good game. But see by the end of it, because I got beat from Fulvio, it was a close one, and I got a bit of a pounding from the Ultramarines. It was pretty, pretty, uh, pretty brutal. Pretty brutal L to catch. But um, Chris is a really good guy, and actually playing against him was really positive. So, um, yeah, really enjoyed the match. But yeah, I went to bed on Saturday and I was like, like asleep like that. You know, yeah. see if you have any insomnia trouble, play a Warhammer tournament. Because <laughs> <laughs> that night you will fucking sleep, man. Uh, um, you went three and two as well, right? You won three and yeah. Yeah, so I caught two. I, I won my first game, lost, loss, and then gay, day two, um, I was up against a list I love, Big Bug Tyranids. Uh, give me just two seconds, and I'll pull up the list because I I think this is really really um fun. Basically, well, the idea of the sorry, uh, what were you gonna say? Uh, it's fun. Now, then they will have the codex yeah. in a couple of weeks, and it will be not fun. <laughs> no, yeah. so, it looks it looks it looks alright. Yeah, go for Warlord it. Warlord was the hive tyrant with the venom cannon, uh, and then they had like a little squad of five barb gaunts because they're cheap. It was uh, Robert uh, Graham that's playing this, so shout out to you, Robert, for a good game. Um, we timed out and just had to talk about the rest of the game. Uh, little squad of barb gaunts, then monsters. One Exocrine, two Exocrines, <laughs> and a Harris Vex, a little Lictor to do actions, two Maliceptors, massive brain bugs, a little squad of ten Neurogons to screen, the Psychophage, which as a Thousand Suns player was very threatening with its anti psyker two up in combat, because oh. Magnus is a Psyker. Um, two Tyranifexes, one with the Acid Spray, which is like a massive heavy flamer. Uh, which is really scary in Overwatch. The other one's a Rupture Cannon, which is like 2d6 damage cannon. And two squads of Zone Throats, which have really nasty Laz Cannon attacks. Uh, and the, the kind of strategy with the list is the Hive Tyrant gives out an aura of everyone's weapons count as assault, so all your big gun bugs can advance into position, and as long as they finish their move next to the Tyrant, they can shoot, shoot, shoot. Eskrins give everything reroll ones against the target issue. It's a cool list, yeah. very killy, but I was able to squeak out a win there by hiding, by playing the objectives, only exposing what I need to, using the uh, Thousand Sons of a Stratagem, where if one of your psychers can see, the rest of your sh- psychers can shoot a target that that one can yeah. see. So I was firing Magnus and his little lieutenant in front of him out of line of sight through the wall at the big bugs. Um, so, so that managed to squeak out a win there. Um, and then game five was against Dave and uh, his very threatening Marines list with a couple of tanks, a big 10 man desolation Marine squad with Apothecary and Boatwater Discipline, which sat on top of the ruin. And just, I, again, I, got, uh, uh, I can't believe I did this. I've sparred with Dave quite a lot and it doesn't usually get me, but I. I've been keeping reserves on top of the table. So I always put my reserves on the table so my opponent can see what I have to bring in. But Dave keeps his reserves on the table, so I totally forgot he had dropped pod with 10 desol- uh, oh. Devastators in reserve. Oh. And turn one, he went first and dropped it in my backfield, because I was like, fuck. <laughs> and he took like 10 wounds from Magnus yeah. turn one. And I was we like, know. oh. Yeah, we know El Presidente yeah. loves a drop pod or two. He does. Possibly. He does. And um, I was like, rubbish. I totally forgot about this. Tried to turn around. Uh, Magnus blew one squad apart, blew the drop pod up, turn one. But then there's this one squad with two guys in it that I shot like, I think I shot them three turns in a row with like <laughs> 300 plus points and they just didn't die. And I was like, Stop shooting las cannons at me from my deployment zone, man. <laughs> um, but ultimately, <laughs> ultimately, uh, managed to get the win on points again, thanks in no small part to my middle management sorcerer that I bigged up in the podcast episode, uh, Voice Prospero. Check it out if you haven't already. Uh, he makes my unit untargetable outside of 18 inches. So those oh, Desolation okay. Marines could not do a huge amount 
yeah. against my wizards that were on target pull. Uh, so, yeah, very, for me, I was really, really happy. I had a really high scoring tournament. I had an average of, including my losses, 90 points a game. So that's pretty like respectable considering I caught two L's. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's their GT setup. Uh, it was like a three days, three games on Saturday, two games on the Sunday. Sunday's a much more chilled out affair, I think, at the GT. What do you think, Fubu? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, it's nice because you get five games in a row, kind of, in two days. And so you get the grip through your army. And at the end of the five days, you really, really know what your army can do. And you remember, oh, in the first game, I should have played this strategy or I should have moved here. And then I could have used this tactic and, and etc. It's quite good if you want to, yeah, just know an army. Even if you are like not familiar with it, just get some games so you know the basic mechanics and then you can refine them in a longer tournament. I really like GTs. Um, it's a lot of time that you are just like uh, committing for getting some games on. But uh, once you get like to a certain level and you do well, you just enjoy it and you can see back and see, oh, I've sc- I could have scored like another 10 points in that game because I could have done much, much more with my army. And then you just refine and fine tune your list, and it's so so enjoyable. It's tiring, don't get me wrong. It's really really tiring. I remember when I started playing GTs, I was absolutely devastated after a couple of of, of games. I was absolutely out. Uh, but you kind of it's like um it's like going to the gym, right? It's just you just build up some resilience yeah. on the long run, and you just you just do it in the end. Mm. And what um so what was the results of the tournament this week who won and what was best painted who was best sportsman what were those lists like um did either of you play into any of the lists um during the tournament especially the winning list so yeah uh funny first position uh brian soup a uh, great player playing at el Dali. Uh, with five wins and no losses. Uh, he got 100 points game one, 96 to game two, 92 games three and four, and 97 game four. Uh, yep. Fulvio played him. Second uh-huh. place, uh, Ennis Wilson with his Thousand Sons and wow. Chaos Stevens. Uh, game one, uh, 100 points win. Game two, 61 point loss. Uh, game three, 94 point win. Game four, 87 point win. And game five, 92 point win. Um, I think Innes got beat by the Death Watch game too, which are oh, no wow. joke. Um, oh, really? Yeah, I tried my best. I tried but, my best, but I scored. Well, Fulvio <laughs> also played Innes. Exactly. <laughs> played one and two. Exactly. It was absolutely... It was a great game. Uh, both both of them were just, I mean, amazing opponents. I, I, I think I played three or four times against Brian, and every time the games against him goes the same way. Be he's playing. He was playing either Tau the first time or Orcs the uh, the second time. This time Elder, I always end up like backing me in my deployment zone, and I cannot go any further than that. It's just like oh. <laughs> always like this. But yeah, it's, it's just it was lots of learning points. Um, his army is very strong. Is I yeah. mean, he's a, he's, a, he's an excellent player. And... I think some people had some suspicions about how well that list would do going into the tournament, um, <sighs> and I think they were very much affirmed. The the list for anyone wondering um, is uh, all all the Eldar Heat. So Autark Wayleaper, who is the lone operative, he has the Phoenix Gem to get back up on a two up when he dies. Uh, Fwagen, who is a character who gets up when he dies. Yep. Two Farseers, which can give minus one to wound out to any units, and they can flip fate dice to sixes, which is really nice for some of the other units in the list. Uh, two Spirit Seers. The first of which has Fate's Messenger, which I can't quite remember what it does, but I remember thinking, that's quite a good enhancement. Um, they are attached to, each of the spirits here is attached to a 10-man Wraith Guard unit yep. with the uh, Wraith Cannons, which are like 18-inch LAS Cannons with devastating wounds on a T7 2-up save infantry chassis, which, if you shoot it, can activate as a visual shooting phase. Yep. So... Oh. Pretty nasty. Um, so then there's a ring light it. backing it all up. Oh, if well, you shoot it, it will shoot if you back. shoot it, it will you just need to kill shoot. Your <laughs> you need to yeah, kill it. No, you, need, you can shoot them. Yeah, no, you can shoot them, but you need to be like 
18 inches away. So okay. the idea is to like, so they have another, uh, it goes, they, this unit goes well with a, with a stratagem, which is Phantasm, which is the best stratagem in the game, which makes them move on a, for one CP, uh, seven inches. So they can move forward and shoot you at the second activation, uh, which is annoying. It's really annoying. Mm. Uh, let's just to close it out, uh, has one squad of Rangers, which are just, I think, action monkeys. They're cheap, 55 points. Uh, a Night Spinner, which is an indirect shooting tank, which can slow you down. So yep. nice to set in the home objective and just shoot the shit out of someone from cover. Uh, a squad of Warp Spiders, which can advance 24 inches. So they're infantry that can stop around to grab the objectives. And a squad of Shadow Spectres, which are infantry, a couple of shooting profiles. Um, but their whole th shtick is that they can move, and every time they shoot, they can move afterwards. So really very, very strong. So um, th you can understand why the list is so good, especially with that uh, the Wraith Knight. Having one, I think, is, is better. I think I like one more than I like two. I think one right? is enough. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, why do you need two? Right, like if you if you shoot something with a heavy wraith cannon, you just fate dice that wound into a six, and then you're just doing d six plus six mortals. I mean, if you want friends, yeah. you play none. But yeah. hi, Larry. <laughs> if you are like Larry, you play two and you just yeah, go Take for respect. it. No, oh, that's that... lovely. You leave them yeah. alone. Um, so that was the, the first place lesson. It's pretty good. Uh, and just to round off the top three. Um, Connor Leach from Shara Knights. Uh, he's listed as Custodi uh, Eldari in the BCP, but uh, he actually took Custodies. Oh, okay. um, his faction selected as Eldari, which I think is why in the Meta Watch article that we were mentioned in, if you have not read that, give it a check out. It'll give you the inside scoop on the competitive 40k scene globally over the last weekend. Uh, very nice write up every Monday. Um, he is running custodies with all the custodian guard. Um, yep. And he had Good a 50 stuff. point loss game one, then 100 point win, 98 point win, 92 point win, 62 point win. Wow. Um, so essentially so... it was that last game, even though it was a win. Yeah. But the points were so low that, like, yeah, yeah. essentially dragged that down a little bit at the end there. Yeah. And NS had 30 <clears throat> battle points on him, so he took the second place. Mm. Um, yeah. But okay. again, very, again, cl close and. Uh, that's good because we like uh, a bit of friendly competition. Yeah. Uh, Honourable mentions, of course, to Larry Martin that uh, Fubu was talking about with his double wraith knights coming in fourth, and our very own a uh, Mister Derek Douglas in fifth place with his custodes. Um Him and his army of four plus dice rolling on a four plus. <laughs> yeah. We like have a recurring a joke. Yeah, he took a list hinging around rolling four ups because he gets yeah. the four up field pin on the wardens because he's so infamously good at just rolling fours. Mister four up, if he... that's him. Yeah, yeah. Mister four up. And um, what's nice to see is kind of that it's a mix of factions. You know, we've been he hearing quite a lot about Eldar complete domination. Obviously, an Eldar one, a list one. But also the person playing the Eldar list is a very good player and a very good list writer. So it was nice to see in that top 10 when I was looking just a, quite a range of different factions in there. And it goes to show you, don't be scared of the Eldar. Please play tournaments. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was good to just see a range of factions and that people brought a range of factions to the tournament as well. And that's always nice to see a little bit of variety because it's not nice having to play mirror matches. Apologies, Larry. Yeah, you've played, what was it, three mirror <laughs> matches? Three, three hours. Oh, yeah. I think, um, so that's the, the tournament ranking winners, but we also have a couple of non points related winners. Um, yep. Do you have a list of two of you? Yeah. We have Team Dagnall, which won Best Painted with his Death Watch, which was amazing. Like a Death Watch made with highlights on the weapons and any single surface was highlighted like okay. um, heavy metal style. It was absolutely amazing. Yeah, amazing. Very, very nice. Really cool. Uh, I don't know if anyone has seen like Death Watch. Usually the like, like the black armor is like can be quite intimidating because it's just like every, everything, every surface is black. 
So he mm -hmm. made an amazing job. Well done. And then we have best sportsmanship for David Calder, which was rocking Drukari, which tempted me. When I saw he was playing Drukari, I was like, oh, I should bring my Drukari as well. But yeah, is tough stuff for Drukari because they, they, the army is not really there. It's not bad, but it's... They have like one trick and it's Dark Lance. Uh, right yeah, yeah. The problem is that when His... you shoot them, they just, they just die. And His they army dark also, lands. by the way, absolutely stunning. I think there's some freehand on the back of the Ravagers, like some really nice symbols and stuff. Oh, yeah, st stunning painted army um, for the best sportsman as well. Anyone that can freehand, yeah. I hate them. Not because <laughs> I don't like freehand. I hate them because I cannot do that in any form. Also, if anyone wants to teach me how to keep a freaking point on my paintbrush, that would also be amazing. Because literally, it's like, oh, this one, this one is the one that's going to stay pointed. And the next thing you know, it's like, I'm like, what is it? What yeah. do I need well, to do? Have I have the solution for you, Nick. Please tell me. So, if you go on our Discord and you go yes. on uh, affiliation, <laughs> that's a, a shameless plug, guys. <laughs> Absolutely shameless. If I you go on the affiliation this. link, I know, me neither. There you go. Um, or if you go on the affiliate links, you get all our affiliation. And we have like Element Games and Wayland Games that uh, decided to help us like getting some, some perks and giving some perks to people because people that orders from them gets double the points. And there's a wee, nice wee company which is uh, down south in England, which is called Rosemary & Co. And they do, I swear, the best brushes ever because they are cheaper than GW and way better. If you buy the Koninsky Sable, uh, they last a lot because it's like a natural fiber. Now we're going into the details and stuff, but yeah, it's a really, it really nice brush. And actually, Ross you can keep the tip. Yeah, yeah, Ross He's... is... Ross is probably the best paint we know. Mm -hmm. he yeah. I'd say probably. Like, Ross is for a commission paint. He, he is all about Rosemary & Co. So, shout out to Hellglazer, our boy. Catch him in the uh, painting and modeling section of our Discord because his mm -hmm. stuff's always absolutely sick. Also, get him on Instagram. Jump, jump on. He's doing Ragnar Blackman at the moment. While I can't agree with him painting Space Rose character, <laughs> it's, it's kind of hard to disagree with the paint job that he's done. Um, yeah, so anyone that wants affiliate links, brushes, all that kind of stuff, join the Discord. As always, our Discord link is down in the chat. You do not have to live in Glasgow, in Scotland, to be part of our community. Please join. There is literally so much chat going on, honestly, 24-7. You could probably wake up at like 4 in the morning and be chatting with someone on that Discord. Um, it is full and it is active, so please get involved. Um, other stuff that's happening um, this week, just before I forget a mention, we have our first Blood Bowl tournament that is being run by Douglas, um, one of our members, and that's going to be a sevens tournament. It's going to be run this Friday, so if you're down, if you're just playing 2K or you're hobbying, please go across and just see what goes down in Blood Bowl. It's a relatively new, um, I say relatively, but it's quite a new um, gaming system um, that has really been picking up speed, essentially because it doesn't take potentially three hours <laughs> to get through a whole game of it. And you can play quite a bit of it. They always seem to be sitting down and laughing, whereas I look at the 2K tables and people are like crying and like trying to do oh, stretches, no, yeah, yeah. trying to do yeah. stretches or reading their books to try and find something to do. So it's got, a, they're a much happier bunch of the Blood Bowl players. Um, but yeah, shout out to Douglas this weekend. That's going to be great. And I can't wait to have a little bit of a chat about what went down at that tournament and just get um, the sort of the inside scoop. Maybe even from Douglas, if you would like to come onto the podcast, Douglas, that'd be awesome. That'd be cool. Um, one of my questions that I wanted to ask both of you, kind of for people that were potentially didn't sign up for the GT this weekend, who were like on the fence, didn't know, maybe newer to the competitive scene, what kind of what would your recommendations be to someone that's thinking about it and kind of 
what would you say to someone that was sort of thinking two day tournament? It's a big time commitment. Kind of what are your sort of your tips? There's two people that I've been to a few now. Um, when you go here, I was gonna say, <clears throat> I, was, I was gonna say, don't feel like you need to jump into a one day tournament first. Some people would say it's wise maybe to try one dayer, but I think I, my first ever tournament was a two dayer, and I think because it was a, a two dayer, knowing that there's gonna be five games, I I I enjoyed it more because I I think I lost, I lost the game round one, but it gave me. Like motivation to play a harder game day two, right? So day one, I think I went two wins and one loss. It was at uh, Nightly Gaming, um, and I had it was a ninth edition Thousand Suns, uh, and Grey Knights had just dropped, and I took my Thousand Suns to the tournament. I had a Vortex Beast that I had on loan from Fulvio, absolutely cool. But um, yeah, I think if you if you're on the fence whether or not you're wanting to do it, my advice would be try going to a club night or wherever you play, but play like five games in a row with the same list. Just just casual friendly games. Could be on five separate days. But like if you need to play with a new list every game, you're not gonna like tournaments because tournaments are like drilling five games back to back to back to back to back with the same list and like getting the most out of that one list that you've been workshopping for a while. Yeah. Great. My suggestion is just just go and try. If you're interested in competitive, it, you, it, you don't have to be like, ah, I, I, I need to learn how to play in a in a tournament. It's, it's not how it is. You, you can play like a completely chill game with your pals mm-hmm. in your garage at our club, and you don't need to go to a, a cutthroat uh, two days GT to learn like the ropes really right um, if you want to improve and you want to go into the competitive scene yes you really need to uh, put your heart on the line and go for it uh, today seems a lot of time and can be daunting um, don't be scared of losing even five games in a row because mm-hmm. that's the only way you're going to learn no one no one learns like from day one and knows exactly what his army does and exactly what my opponent army does. You need to learn doing mistakes. It's the only way you do it. Uh, that will teach you that next time, oh, you could do this one. So I'm not going to react like this way. I'm going to try another approach and this time might work. Don't, don't, don't be scared and don't be disheartened. Even if you lose like the last game, you're on the last table and make the most of it and just enjoy the the games and you will learn and you will improve from there it's it's just a it's just a journey even if you're losing too right like it's you've you've never lost until the end of turn five yeah so like oh sorry maybe, maybe that's not quite true maybe maybe you understand you've lost the game but you're never unable to score points until the end of turn five so it's not about like even when i'm losing and it's maybe not very nice view but i'm like how can i make my opponent bleed like how can i cost them points and how can i score as highly as i can even from being on the back foot and and like i think actually the best warhammer i played at the weekend was when i was losing because you're having to make decisions like hard decisions and like having to just come up with a plan on the fly and stick to it because your plan has not gone well you know no, 100%. And I think one of the things I'll add to what Volvi was saying there as well and Yuki is learn from your opponent as well. Don't be scared, especially mm-hmm. if you know they are high-ranking player. Like, you might end up being ranked, especially game one, you might end up being drawn into maybe the best player in the world or the best player in the country. That is the way that rankings get done in tournaments from the beginning and then everything gets filtered through but learn from them watch what they're doing and don't be as scared to do stuff that they do if you're like oh that was a really interesting nice deployment or i like what they did with all those units 100 percent. that's you're here to learn as well from other people as well as learning your own way of playing so 
take from both sides and there's nothing better than a five day tournament to really playing it, playing know yourself. Them. Playing against an opponent who is better than you is just like, especially like you're playing against Ennis and Brian, they charge for coaching, yeah. right? So, like, playing against them is free coaching, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm already 10 points, I'm already 10 points better than I was before because I have two coaching games one after the other. Ah, I know, <laughs> I know man. lots now. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I'm absolutely. Great. No, don't, don't be scared. And, um, Obviously, if two days isn't your jam, or you're just like worried about doing a two day before one days Reaper, we have I think our I don't I, I don't is our next tournament an our a one day or is it Halloween first? Yep. Yeah, we've got an RT no. coming up soon. We have an RTT which is uh, no. oh, what's the name here? A small fish? No, big oh. fish in a small pond. So uh, we have a couple of names. Yeah. My idea was uh, small fish in a big pond because the big fish will be, be down at the London uh, GT. Yep, oh, which is ours. the weekend, yes. uh, the thirtieth of September, first <laughs> of no, October. If you're a player, and and I just said, don't be afraid of playing uh, the top, top, top elite players. If you are very scared of it, this is actually probably a really good tournament to attend because most of the most of the um, most serious forty k players will be down in London for the London GT. Um, it's going to be a one dayer. I think actually it's probably quite a relaxed event. So I was thinking it's either going to be the small fish in a big pond, uh, RTT, or I think Dave has a much funnier idea, which is just not LGT. <laughs> That yeah, it's good. Yeah, um, it's gonna be good. Um, I think I'm not going to be playing. I will be working that event, uh, doing maybe some judging or manning the stream uh, okay. because I think with a, a manned stream, maybe a couple of us on it, we could get some casting of the stream. If that's your thing, oh, that um, if you're watching the. LGT stream, feel free to tune into ours instead for some yeah, dulcet then... tones, some wittier banter, and uh, dare I say, more ropey 40k. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll be right. We'll be if you want to see like edge of your seat stuff, this is the stream you want to <laughs> you want to be raw. We'll be raw dog in that stream, and it'll be good. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think. 100% come down to one day is I've done a one day -er. like do you know what what's good about the one day -er is it's you practicing for the first three days of a GT because the second day is never going to be as bad because it's only yeah. two games and you're kind of towards the end it's a Sunday everyone's kind of like in a much more chilled mood a lot of the time a lot of the top positions so you're probably a one two and three are kind of going to be pretty close to being decided at least. So it can yeah. be, you've got a lot less pressure on yourself. And yeah, we just have a good time down at Reaper. So just come along. Maybe we can yeah, do like some good. interviews and stuff. That would be great as well. That would yeah, be nice. Be good. Um, Everything is content. Everything is content. Content. We have some crazy content um, ideas. Ooh. All stream, stream, um, all coming, sorry, from probably the Crystal Maze is our biggest um, <laughs> <laughs> inspiration for who, content. Who, who's, our bald, who's our bald present? Who's our... I, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, who is? Who's our presenter? <laughs> I don't want to say any names in case I have known people, so I'm going to just leave that one yeah. for you guys to ponder. Yeah. Well, maybe um, up a, if we could do like a little meme that just sort of comes up in the post... <laughs> Surely I will be able to activate the stickers by then. Yes. Surely. Yes. yes. It's our Richard O'Brien. That's what I yeah. want to do. Um, um, but yeah, the, the, the way, the one... sorry, what are you saying, Uh You mentioned Halloween briefly. Oh, I did. Make I'm sure me. you're sorry, at Halloween because that tournament's going to be. It's the most fun tournament we run is the Halloween tournament because we encourage you to come dressed as your faction. If not, Come dressed as a faction, it's fine. But bonus points for coming as the one that you dress as. And I think we should do a prize for best costume, as well as our usual tournament trophies. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we should. You're going to have stiff competition. I will be going 
in red body paint and dye my hair red. So yes. you will have. Yeah, get your good costumes at ready. <laughs> I've literally stolen a costume or... idea that I don't want anyone else to know that I'm doing because it's so low maintenance. <laughs> Actually, what's good about this one is it's so low maintenance that everyone can do it, and it makes sense. (laughs) This guy, I I swear, this is the thing that we talked about a while ago. Yeah, it's it's exactly that thing. I think I I I I remember this low maintenance one. Yeah, Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Uh, Well, stay tuned, because it will be live. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we have some questions some podcast questions so let's go into um those um the sort of first one that we've got on here is how do you get out of the rut a painting rut or a hobby in rut and sort of motivate yourself to paint essentially well i'll i'll give my two cents here um i know your reply uh, already here, so I'll choose another one. Um, yeah, yeah. It's something I actually have done it like the other day. I went to Hobbycraft and I, I started with starting modeling, like you know, airplane, warplanes, that sort of stuff. That way I started like when I was like ten or something, um, and then I completely abandoned that stuff when I got sucked into the 40k pit, just like completely fell into it. Uh, and I haven't done anything since. I still have some models that I need to build, but I never, never went round to. Um, I just finished like a long stretch painting lots of stuff, uh, AOS army and and stuff. But it keeps growing. I don't know where. I mean, it comes out like from the walls. I don't know. <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm a bit deflated at the moment. So I found this wee kit. Is like a message me. It's uh, 109 note from the World War Two. It's like mm-hmm. a wee kit. It's like like this, tiny, ten pounds. Uh, honestly, I think like three or four bits, and you just put it together and glue it, and it just gives you a bit of a change. Maybe I would say probably if you're bored of doing I don't know like another squad of ten Marines and a lot, oh, I can't start this stuff. Just just switch to something completely different. Do mm-hmm. a night. Do uh, I don't know something fantasy. Do scenic scenery as well which is really really fun to paint because it yeah, takes yeah. nothing it's just like massive surface spray and and it's ready to go just to add the variety you know and just uh, do something different and it's not constantly the same slog of 100 bodies it's all the same yeah. that's that's my, my suggestion what i do sometimes and i still do it so my help right Chair, what's yours um it's maybe bad advice I'll give you it. Um, I genuinely get the most painting done when I sign up for a tournament and plan on using models that I haven't painted. So, like leading up to our GT that closed off, like our goodbye to ninth edition GT, I had like two thousand points of utterly unpainted, literally only primed Chaos Space Marines, and I think I signed up for the tournament with a Chaos Space Marines list three weeks out. And I turned around 2,000 points in like three weeks with like nice detailed basing. I think the Friday before I roped uh, you and Dave, Fulvio and Dave, in to do a little bit of trim for me. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I wasn't just farting around. I was doing trim at the same time. Um, but like for me, being able to turn around 2,000 points in a few weeks while I'm still working full time and I still have my other outside of hobby commitments. Like basically knowing, like I need to just have this done. Mm-hmm. Great! Like I signed up for our last tournament, just like literally last weekend, with Thousand Suns. I have I have some uh, CSM cultists, but they're not in the Thousand Suns color scheme. So I bought like a box of twenty Kyric acolytes from Sigmar, and I was like, "Cool, I'm gonna run them with my two ten man cultist squads." So I had two weeks to paint two mutilith vortex beasts and 20 cultists and i just you know took it into lunch on my day uh on my when i was working just took a little box of five or so cultists got a little bit of work on them during lunch uh and they are fully painted they're all based up i've got uh some nice sandy bases with real sand on them and i even uh painted the black trim around the base so like having a deadline of i need to have this model or i'm not going to feel the legal army 
for the tournament is 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 the kick up the arse that I need. But you need. Just won't do it. I actually don't love the painting side of things, to be honest. No, that's right. And um, what I would say is that that sort of reminds me of all those sort of memes and those pictures you see of people probably similar to yourself, the ones that don't really love the painting side of it, but love the tabletop side of it, where they're like mm -hmm. painting on the train down yeah. to tournaments yeah. or out the back of their car just to get their free colours. They're like, that's all I need. There's free colours on everything here. Is it I even was... a tournament if you're not painting the night before? Yeah, that's yeah. true. I was I painting mean... the highlighter on tow in our hotel room in Nottingham the morning of the tournament. Um, oh it wasn't it was it was it was battle ready but it looked like yeah. shit so i was like well i'll finish off this like squad of crisis suits before we go yeah. um so i think um one of the things that we're coming to is towards the end we've had um some pretty good chat about the gt next time we come around we will be speaking again about a a list so we'll be getting a list on the show um hopefully maybe one of you, one of the listeners, one of our Reaper members potentially on the show to talk about a list that we haven't had on here yet. That would be really nice. We could maybe even speak to maybe some of the people that were sitting in the top spots of the tournament, maybe yeah, talking about cool. their list, like why they chose what they chose, like how they approach stuff. That might be interesting too. Um, and um, yeah, we'll be back on that list. So we'll be putting stuff on the Discord as well, just looking for people that might be interested in coming on, telling us about your list. It doesn't matter if you are new to the sport, you've been playing it for, like I said, sport, because it's uh, still a sport, you know? <laughs> what defines a sport? Um, we're not getting into that question. <laughs> into that question. But for all of us um, nerds, um, we play this sport. Um, on the tables um, on the tabletop and um we are oh it doesn't matter if you're new if you're been playing this for a really long time we want to hear about your list we want to know what your process is how you put stuff together so it's gen it's genuinely open to anyone that wants to come on and just speak about um a list that we haven't discussed already i think that would be would be great and um just really, the end is, do we have any rants? Any rants that we want to talk about? Why are you looking at me? It's I, always I your rant. Sorry. I'm it's looking my... at my camera, but you know I'm looking at you. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm, feeling, I'm feeling observed. Um, right, I have two things. Like One is a more positive thing, and yeah. one is a rant rant. So I'll start okay, with the rant rant, which is very ranty. Um, so we all seen the announcement of the new codex, the Tyranids, and the new data cards and stuff. So these means yes. goodbye free rules, which is a very, very sad moment. Yes. Sadly, people need to buy the codex. Okay. YGWY, yeah, yeah. you don't give us the free rules, and then if someone wants to buy the codex, which will be at that point like the limited edition, with stuff, crusade and etc. and all the good stuff that you put in it. People can buy that one, but if they want just the rules, just give me the rules. Or just give me like, right. I don't know, a two pound subscription on, on, on the app and just let yeah, me just access the rules of the army I want. Yeah. Two pounds we're, a month. We're all fucking not... nerd. We buy the book anyway, because we want yeah, to have exactly. the book. Yeah. I, like, don't, we... I, I don't, I'm not gonna buy them this, this time, sorry, no. Really? No. Yeah, no. Because the rant is, is more convoluted. It just goes into the, oh, I buy a book, but then after two weeks, it's been FAQ'd already. So it's basically, I'm buying it's something wrong. that is not, yeah. it's wrong. And then if you buy the cards, probably there are all, all, always mistakes and typos on them. So you need to reprint them. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, 100%. thanks. Um, and what? Sad. So, so will it, what will be available on their, essentially their battle scribe, their version of like the army um, creator. Will none uh, of that information be on like, what's even going to be on there? Like obviously that's know, going because, to be I mean, behind a paywall. Yeah, yeah that's the, definitely, the builder is behind the paywall, but then if he's like anything like AOS, you need to buy the codex for the code. You put the code into the app and then you get um, 
all the data shit, right? You get rid of your hands. That's, that's, that's fine. Because yeah. right? you could be paying subscription for the app. Yeah. And but you, you don't have access. Oh, great. Can't we? Yeah, yeah. You don't have yeah. access to the content that yeah. theoretically you're paying yeah. for. Yeah. So but you pay. If, if let's say if I own like all the codexes, right? I don't know how many are they, like 15 codexes. I get all the codes and I get access to everything. And I pay the same of you, Kier. They only have one code and I have access to one army. It's not fair. Rant. That's, like, the, the thing at the moment that the app I've found is really useful for looking up my opponent's rules. Yeah. Right? At the GT, I thought it was really useful because I could just literally type the rule in and it finds it. Great. And guess what? So All those rules are behind a paywall. How the hell am I going to check that? Yeah. yeah. And what I can't wait for is the long slog of codex releases where one by one we have an army that's way better than everyone else as their codex comes out. That's what I look forward to. Yep. Yeah. So, so happy. <laughs> End us on a happy note, Fabio. But, exactly. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna... to Let's finish strong. Okay, right. Yes. So, what if I tell you that you, valued Me? club member, could take home a whole box of Leviathan unopened a home for free? No way. Right. So, I know. I know. It's crazy. I know. It's crazy. It is uh, Dave's idea, and uh, we're gonna. We wanted him to to introduce it to you guys, but it's on me. Uh, <laughs> So from the 1st of September, we're going to open a giveaway, which is open to just club members. It's another perks of being a club member at River Wargaming, apart from the amazing community. So we're going to make a post, pinging everyone, or every club member. Sorry for the ping, but it's needed. Uh, what you need to do is go on the post, uh, follow us on Instagram, follow us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitch. And then you comment at the bottom of the picture, uh, making a wee post saying, my name is Fulvio Raven84 on Twitch, Raven84 on YouTube, and Fulvio whatever on Instagram. And I, I put the three like on the three social. And that's all you need to take part into the raffle. The raffle will be, uh, I think we're going to make it last 15 days or so. So I think probably on the 16th or the 17th of September, we're going to do a live stream at this point because it's nice, it's fun. And we're going to physically draw the, the name of the winner. And I think we think it's a nice, it's a nice perk for, for everyone. We, we, we have a, a box that is, is a lot of money. So 150 mm -hmm. quid, I think. Yeah, and yeah. It's, I think it's a nice thing for uh, to, to to thank you guys over the support. Almost seventy, I think more than seventy members now. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you, and I hope you enjoy the the, the giveaway for this year. Yeah. Yeah, please get think... involved, and all those details will be up on the Discord as well. We'll also put the details in the description on um, YouTube. So obviously, you have to be a member of Reaper. So if you're listening to the podcast you're not on our discord please just come into the discord become a member like um and just get involved in the chat in the community it's a great community and we have a lot of fun playing and there's it's a full house every week um and it's great buzz when you're in there as well i think um, it's really nice that we've gone from uh our rank being why are we having to pay more money to <laughs> Access content that we have to pay money to access in addition exactly. we have to pay subscription fees on top of one-off purchase fees because we are not g-dubs we Easy. Have, have decided we are not g-dubs yeah <laughs> well uh we uh, yeah no i think i just i speak for everyone in the committee especially um when i say we really value everyone who's got us this far because without you guys it's cliched but it's impossible right this, this wouldn't have happened Without the support of the community, without you guys um, signing up to become members, we could never have made this viable. Um, so look out, I guess, for more giveaways in the future mm -hmm. as we continue our success. Um, and if you are into giveaways and stuff like that, like the, the, the way that they are possible is with your support. So um, supporting us on like social media platforms. The more support we get, the more often we can do stuff like these giveaways. And yeah. Leviathan Box, by the way, with the Nids and so, Pro oh, Space so, yeah. codices dropping yeah. soon. Chef's kiss. Is there a better time to get into either of those factions no. or to top up your collection 
that you already have. Oh, you yeah. can start yeah. two army once. I mean, yeah, uh, it's a lot of plastic, dude. I'm still working through lot, my yeah. Yeah. Uh, plus. Hang on a second. I can pop in just the last question. Just sneak it in at the end. Someone nice. I don't remember who asked on the on the podcast. Uh, ah, James. No, it wasn't James. No, it was yeah, it was James. How to hide the cost of Warhammer from your partner? Well, <laughs> no cost. Hen is is it's a free giveaway. I no. I just had to start this army because it's free. There you're you go. making money. You're making money by joining Reaper Actually, and Warhammer. you in. are. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, if you win this giveaway, that is a profitable membership that you've signed up for. <laughs> to bear it. Right <laughs> and um, just quickly before we um, wrap up there, just a shout out to say the crusade is well and truly underway. Um, some great work being done there by one of our great members, Sam, um, aka Nurgle. And um, also Dave, um, who sits on our committee as well, just doing some great work on the um, rules side of stuff, doing some great work on the narrative side of stuff. And please just keep getting your games in, keep having fun. That's literally what Crusade mm -hmm. is about. Crusade is about writing a story for yourself, for your army, with another player, and just Crusade gets ridiculous. That is the only way I can say it, where you have ridiculous models that can do ridiculous things. And that is the pure joy of Crusade. So get involved in Crusade. And also our 2K League, that's going to be starting very, very imminently. So please look out for announcements on that if you've signed up to one of our free tiers of leagues. And all the details will be getting put as always, in that Discord where you can find all information about the club, what we're up to, what we're doing, and how you can get involved. So without further ado, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. If you're at the GT, thank you so much for coming along. We hope you had as good a time as we did at that tournament. And we hope to talk to you soon on this podcast, see you soon in the club, and read them all about you in our discord so thank you very much everyone and good night bye, bye guys bye